Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery. Today's video is all about magic wands. We will talk about the history of magic wands and how to use a wand, look into different styles of wands and of course learn how to use wand magic in spells and rituals. I also included a wand DIY where I show you how to make a magic wand for witches. There will also be a short excerpt on Wiccan wands and their use and tradition. In fact, I will introduce different wands suitable for different magical purposes that might be most fitting to your type of witchcraft and personal taste. For example, a crystal wand, a wooden wand, a green witch wand and a kitchen witch wand. So let's get witching! But before we dive into all of this, let's look into history and discover why magic wands were used and why a wand is such an ubiquitous tool in pop culture and the fantasy witch world, as well as in the modern witch community. When we look at old drawings, carvings and depictions of powerful figures throughout the ages and throughout all cultures, we might notice that a lot of times they will be holding a stick, staff or scepter in their hands. From the Egyptian pharaohs to the Roman Flamines, the sorceress Circe in Greek mythology to the Siberian shamans, and of course biblical depictions of Jesus, Moses and other religious figures. Later on kings or religious leaders would hold scepters. In general people of power and influence were carrying those sacred sticks. So we can gather that said sticks, staff or scepters were a symbol of power, patriarchic leadership and authority. But when and how did the idea of a magic wand come to be? It is hard to pinpoint the exact use for wands throughout the ages because as an object it is polysemous, meaning it is an everyday, easy to obtain item that can hold different meaning. In some cases it might just have been a stick, in other cases it was believed to hold additional magical meaning. But where is the proof that wands were considered a ritual magical tool? When we go a bit further in history to the times of the written word, we will actually find a lot of interesting tidbits. In the Edda, a collection of Old Norse poetic writings from around the 10th century, a gambentin is mentioned, a powerful staff to obtain power over someone's free will. In Homer's Odyssey, Circe transformed men into swine with a touch of her magic wand. The Key of Solomon, a grimoire from the 14th century and wildly spread manuscript of Renaissance magic, mentions magic ones and how to make them multiple times. For example, the stuff should be of elderwood or cane, and a wand of hazel or nut tree. In all cases the wood being virgin, that is, of one year's growth only. They should each be cut from the tree at a single stroke on a day of mercury at sunrise. The characters shown should be written or engraved thereon in the day and hour of Mercury. In the Wiccan belief, the wand is part of the traditional ceremonial tools for any practitioner. Depending on the Wiccan tradition you follow, the wand is either associated with the element of air or the element of fire due to its function as a magical transformation and manifestation tool. Having a linear, projective shape, it is sacred to the god. A Wiccan wand will usually be made out of wood and is often used to invoke the goddess and god, may be used to draw magical symbols in the air or on the ground or to cast a circle in which the ritual or spell work is performed. But what do we use a wand for in witchcraft? A lot of modern witches outside the Wiccan belief also like to work with wand magic for different purposes. A wand is in general there to guide energy from or to you channel and fortify magical intention or energy and manipulate it. You can for example use a wand to enchant an item, a person or yourself by directly putting your magical intention into it. You can direct spells and energy upon a receiving object or person for example for the purpose of healing. You can use a wand to feel out energy or to connect with energy. For example, I love to work with sticks found in the forest in order to draw grounding energy from the forest floor by placing a wooden staff in my hand and connecting it to the ground underneath. Wand magic is often used to cast a circle by physically drawing one around you with a wand or toward your home by walking the outlines of your house with your magic wand while visualizing a protective barrier. It can also be used in energetic shielding and protection in general, 
or to directly cleanse space in combination with visualization and sometimes the use of a specific crystal wand. You can even have special ones for different spells and types of magic. I do, for example, have a variety of kitchen match ones, simple cooking spoons that I have wood burned with certain sigils for different intentions and spells. For example, one that helps me conjure up healthy and balanced meals, or another one to stir love and compassion into the food. So this wand already holds the magical intent and energy in it, which I put in there while making it. And I imagine by stirring my food with it, it gives off some of its magic and infuses the dish. So here the wand contains a spell that then is released upon using. There are different ways to use the wand. You will most likely hold it in your hand to channel a certain energy through it. What I find works best is to imagine it as a magic pen that can ride in the air with whatever you let flow into it. So you build up an energy in yourself and then visualize it flowing out through your wand with which you can direct it. Depending on how you can feel your magical energy flowing best with your magic wand, there are different ways to handle it. For example, by just directing it onto an object, person or recipient of your spell, by knocking it onto something, solidating the energy, touching an object to connect with it, or by waving it over a person or object to sense energy. Mostly, a magic wand will be made out of wood, especially when following a Wiccan tradition. However, depending on culture, tradition and preferences, materials can widely vary from crystals to metals to bone and ivory to hot glue and plastic. A lot of witches do prefer to use natural materials, claiming that the energy will flow freer through such a wand. But let me tell you ladies, I do have a magic wand made from plastic and it fully satisfies me. Give me a winky smile in the comments down below if you own one too. Different materials will be linked to different correspondences and you can look what speaks to you and your purpose most. But let's look at wooden ones first. In a lot of the medieval grimoires, we will find descriptions of the exact types of woods to use for different purposes in ones. And these have all been inspired by Celtic, Anglo-Saxon and Germanic belief in the different magical powers of certain trees. If you are interested in tree magic, you could look into the Celtic tree calendar or Germanic mythology and German folk stories. You will be able to find more lore and extensive notes there. When looking for the perfect wand wood, you might want to pick your birth tree or you could use the wood from a tree that you have a special connection to. Either because you enjoy how its energy feels or what it means to you personally or because of sentimental ties you have with it. Maybe because you used to play underneath it in your granny's garden when you were a child. Or you just use this random perfectly shaped stick you find on your next walk. If and when making your own wand and gathering wood, make sure it is legal in your area and that you have the permission of the land or forest owner. Also educate yourself on how to harvest the wood without harming the tree and be respectful to mother nature. A lot of witches also work with crystal wands, often for the purpose of healing or cleansing space. There are also specific ones for working with your chakras that often contain corresponding crystals. These ones will either be made of wood with a crystal on one or both sides, one cylindric crystal to be held in the hand, or can be a combination of multiple crystals. In the last mentioned case, I have seen a lot of witches use copper wire to hold their crystal wand together, claiming copper is a great energy conductor, which of course is true for electric and thermal energy. However, in witchcraft we are working more with a metaphorical kind of energy, not so much with a scientific measurable energy. So depending on your belief in this, it might work great for you, but it is definitely not a must or based on hard scientific facts. So personally, I rather go for things I feel a connection to. To quote Mr. Ollivander, the one chooses the wizard. And I do wholeheartedly agree. If you want to use a magic wand, just choose the one that calls out to you and don't make it into a whole to-do or worry about other people's two cents. You can get as creative as you like with your wand making and really tailor it to your type of witchcraft, personal aesthetic preferences or give meaning by including certain symbols, sigils, materials, colors or shapes. 
Before I made these ones for the purpose of this video, I would only use my kitchen witch spoons and sometimes while in the forest pick up a fallen branch as a part of a mindful moment or nature ritual. So magic wands are definitely not necessary when practicing witchcraft, but they can be a useful and fun thing to have if you like to work with tools in your craft. So here we have it, my little magic wand collection. I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you are now excited to make your own wand, I have linked you some great magic wand tutorials in the description box down below. I also included book suggestions for working with wood or trees in your witchcraft that might come in handy when picking the material for your wand. Or maybe you do have a wand already. I would love to hear what you work with and how you personally use your wand. Feel invited to leave a comment and share your experience and knowledge with this witch community. Have the most magical day and see you soon!